because one of the things uh, that wasn't mentioned about me uh, is that I live in the Netherlands, so I'm not a native English speaker, and it's always very, very, you know, scary to talk to a group of native English speakers, being a non-native yourself. So I will take any criticism, uh, except on my uh, language, please. Um, my name is Henry. I'm a developer and architect from the Netherlands. If you have any questions, comments, feedback whatsoever, except uh, about my uh, my English, feel free to reach out. And I don't don't going to do any more self advertising because we're going to run out of time. Um, the next 45 minutes or so, um, I would like to talk to you about monitoring and logging. And then in particular, uh, the things that I have learned uh, about these topics in the last uh, couple of years. So this is just my personal view, my personal experience, and I hope it helps you. Um, and I give no guarantees that it's like the best thing in the world since uh, sliced bread. Now, um, by the way, since we're in a call, I think, and everybody can speak up, I have no objections at all against uh, anyone asking questions or interrupting with something um, if he or she wants to do so. Um, and the first point that I want to make, and that I will probably come back to a number of times uh, this evening, is that monitoring and all the things that we will be talking about is only about one thing for me, and that is knowing what is happening with my applications in production. Or more precisely, maybe, how are my users doing with my application? Are my users happily using my application? And all the things that we will see will revolve about around answering that one single question. And uh, we will do that in three parts. Uh, we will start with a little bit of theory about monitoring and logging. Um, then we will have a part where we talk about what to monitor and what not to monitor. And then I have a part uh, where I will do a lot of demos on how to accomplish that using the Azure Monitor and Application Insights. So let's start with the boring stuff. Um, there are three pillars of monitoring that I want to talk to you about. The first one being instrumentation. And of the three that I'm going to discuss, I think this is the one that is most often forgotten. But instrumentation is the art of getting numbers out of your application. So um, I think when we think about this, everybody starts thinking about things like the average percentage of CPU in use, uh, the percentage of memory in use, free disk space, all these kind of numbers that I can get out of my application, that's instrumentation. But there are more less obvious numbers that I should be interested in getting out of my application. And they might be less interest, less concerned with the system that I'm running on and more concerned with the application that I'm running on top of it. For example, um, the number of times per minute that somebody adds an item to his or her shopping basket can be an interesting number uh, to get out of my application. Um, what we need to know about uh, these numbers, we call them metrics, by the way, is that it's really nothing else uh, than a very long list of a day time and a value. And an example of such a metric in the real world, for example, could be the temperature. And when we think about a metric, uh, there is one thing that we need to know for later on, and that is the notion of dimensions. Con continuing with temperature, instead of having a metric called temperature in Henry's room, and a second metric, temperature in the kitchen, and a third metric, temperature in the living room, we can have one uh, metric called temperature, and we can declare a dimension called location. And then instead of recording a single value, we are going to rec record a value for the dimension, and the actual value. So we're going to record for temperature three values, like say uh, 18, 19, and 20 degrees, and also the three locations where those values occurred. And we can use that later on to make very fancy graphs. Because speaking of metrics, they are the basis of dashboards. Because um, if we have a metric and we plot it, uh, then we get a graph. And when we combine multiple graphs, we have a dashboard. Metrics are also the basis of alerts because we can also add a horizontal line to a graph. And whenever a graph goes above or below, we can get notified, and that's an alert. And the final thing that we need to know about um, metrics is that they are often rolled up over time, which means that if we record a value, let's say every second, that's going to generate a lot of data after a couple of years. And while the data is very valuable at the start, to know, you know what is happening in my application right now, it's not very valuable to have that very detailed information anymore in a couple of years. So maybe we're gonna average it out over the minute if the data is more than two weeks out. And we're gonna average it out over the hour when it's more than, I don't know, 
a half year old. And that way we can still keep a very long history, which might be interesting for trend analysis. We're not gonna spend a lot of data on it, data storage. So that's instrumentation, getting numbers. The second thing that I wanna talk about is tracing. And I think this is what we developers simply call logging. Uh, this is about getting a lot of messages out of your application, telling you what it is doing. Often at a certain point in your application, uh, the name of the class, the number of the line, uh, and the name of the method, you're gonna say, hey, I am doing this. Oh, and by the way, the value of my variables are this, this, and this. It's very code oriented. It's, it's about what the program is doing. And this will generate a lot of data, really a lot and a lot, but it's very valuable because we can use it for troubleshooting. And because of the primary use of troubleshooting, luckily we don't have to retain it very long. So often you see that information like this is retained for two weeks or maybe four weeks, or if you're working in a bank for a bit longer, um, but not too long often. Now, of course, all this logging information or tracing information can be a source of metrics in itself because the number of log entries coming in is also a number. And I want to contrast this uh, with the final thing, which is called logging in theory, um, but what we as developers might call audit logging or something like that. Technically, it's the same thing as tracing, but instead of being very oriented with my code, with my application, it's much more business oriented. Uh, or to say it a bit more formal, it is concerned with recording the state changes within my system. It records things like Henry has paid his bill number 47 on June 2nd. Um, um, it is the place where we go if we want to find out why I got 752 pizzas delivered to my doorstep. It's also the place where we go if we want to find out what a hacker has done um, that has hijacked in the valid account. Um, for that reason, this kind of data is often retained for much, much longer. And if you're smart indefinitely, uh, we have to be a little bit more uh, careful with when we emit this kind of information. Now, I have a lot of other slides and stuff uh, about logging that I want to share with you. Uh, and there are my insights on what we should log or not. Um, but I talked with uh, the host a little bit before we started this. And one of the hints that I got was through those slides and just show us a little bit of code. Um, I see nobody objecting. So what I want to do is I want to pull out Visual Studio and show you a number of the things um, that you can do for getting uh, numbers and logs out of your application. Um, by the way, for those interested in where I live, it's a small island here in the Netherlands. What I want to do is show you this uh, fancy uh, C Sharp application that I have created earlier today. What I've done, I've created file new ASP.NET core project, selected API, pressed it next number of times, and I didn't get a values API, uh, I got a weather forecast API. And if I spin this up, um, it will execute a get command and will show me a JSON file with a number of entries which supposedly are weather forecasts. It's not a very fancy application, but maybe we can add some logging and get some metrics out of this um, while we improve the code. Um, what I've also done, I have added a git ignore file and done a git in it in the root of this folder. That means that uh, I can show you some I am making to this application while we go. So right now, there are no changes here at all. So if we want to uh, get started with uh, logs and metrics, getting out of them out of our applications, uh, and we're working in Azure, we're going to work with a service called Application Insights. And for now, just regard, regard Application Insights as a very big database that we can push stuff towards. And to do that, we have to connect our application to Application Insights. So in my solution browser, I can go to a thing called Connection Service here on the top right, right click it and go to Add Connected Service. And then I can select Application Insights. Now what this is doing, it is authenticating against Azure. And hopefully I'm already logged in. And what it does, uh, it creates what is called this Application Insights workspace where I can send my logging information. So after this marketing slide, I'm gonna get, no, oh, too bad, I have to log in again. Apparently, I get locked out very often. 
think it has something to do with like multi-factor authentication. I apologize, but we should be good to go. There we go. Now I'm authenticating towards Azure again, and I am going to select my subscription. I'm going to create a new resource group where this application inside workspace will be created. I'm going to hit register. Now, while this thing does some preparations, let me tell you what it's doing. First of all, it is adding a NuGet package to my CSPro. The NuGet package is the application inside SDK. It's the thing that I'm going to use to send data. What it's also going to do, it's going to get what is called the instrumentation key out of application insights. And basically see that as the API key that I can use to send data in and ensure that other people cannot do the same thing. Now, and now we can go to the Team Explorer and explore the changes it has created. So like I said, my CS Proy has been changed to have a reference added to Microsoft Application Insights, so the ASP.NET Core. Uh, there is a connected services.json file, which is just bookkeeping for Visual Studio. In my application settings, a new entry has been added with the instrumentation key that I talked about before. And the final change that has been made is that in the startup of my application, in the configure services, a call has been made to services dot add application insights telemetry. And this makes all the application insights classes available within my application. So let's see what we can use those for. And again, if there are any questions or something, feel free to interrupt me or you know, ask them. I do like a little bit of feedback if possible. Um, if we start exploring uh, the weather forecast controller, one of the things that we notice is that a interface of iLogger of T, in this case, iLogger of Weather Forecast Controller, is injected already into this controller. And that's because iLogger of T is part of the default ASP.NET Core um, library set. And this is an interface that you can use to start emitting logs um, to really wherever you want, because there is no implementation of that interface. That implementation of that interface comes from the SDK that you install. It can be Siri log, N log, data doc, or application insights, as we have just installed. So one of the things that I can do now is I can go to underscore logger and log a warning and say, oh no, someone is looking here. And what this will do, um, what well, you kind of expect, um, what it will do, it will emit this log entry and it will send it directly to the application instance, application insights instance that has been created in the cloud. But since I'm running this in the debugger, it is also sent, made available in a interface on my local computer. So here on the top, you can see on my toolbar that application insights has come up. Now here I can click and now I get a screen where I can see all the information that has been collected on my local machine by application insights before it has been forwarded to the workspace in the cloud. And if I say that I want to see all kinds of things that application insights can collect, and I refresh my view, I can see that there are two things being recorded. First of all, uh, the message that I just typed. Oh no, somebody is looking here. And what we can see is that this is a, th a telemetry type uh, trace, which means a log message. But another thing it also recorded was request. So it, it found out that a call was made to localhost la, 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 slash weather forecast, that it returned a 200, that took 280 milliseconds, and it recorded all this information as well. And of course, if we do this as a very high volume, we will gather a lot of interesting information about our application. Now, but there is much more that we can get uh, application insights to collect. So I want to show you a few more things. For example, I can inject another class here as well, which is called the telemetry client. This class that is, uh, is a part of uh, the application insights uh, SDK as well. And I should be able to introduce, thank you. I inject it through the constructor 
save reference. And now I can use that telemetry client to start getting a metric. And I can think of any name that I want. So let's call it uh, weather forecast loot at counter. Oh, sorry, I've been doing some other languages today. And I want to track a value of one. Um, and that means that whenever somebody hits this endpoint, a value of one is emitted for that uh, specific uh, metric. Now I can refresh this a number of times. But one of the things that you might notice is that when I go here, that while the requests have been recorded, the metric is not. And that is because whenever a metric is recorded in Application Insights, um, for one minute, roughly, it will keep all the uh, numbers that come in and cache them locally before it transmits them um, into the cloud, into Application Insights. And the only reason it does that is to save bandwidth. As you can imagine, recording that number one and the name of this metric, um, that's not really a lot of information compared to all the overhead that HTTP uh, brings. So hopefully by now, if I refresh this, we, we got to have a little bit more patience. And then we will see, hopefully, the metrics coming in soon. Okay, let me tell you one final thing then. Um, as you can see right here, there are a number of things that I can collect using Application Insights. So we already have seen traces of messages. We have seen requests. Hopefully, in a bit, we will see metrics. Another thing that it automatically records is every exception that is being raised. Even if it's unhandled, it is still being recorded. What it will also do, it will record every call into every dependency. So if I instantiate an HTTP client and call into another system, it will detect that. It will find out which host I'm calling, how long it is taking, et cetera, et cetera. Now there are custom events. As far as I know, they are deprecated. Page views, they relate to uh, front-end things that I literally know nothing about. And we have availability, uh, which are uh, about availability tests that Application Insights also support. We will not talk about it today. So these are the different types of things that Application Insights can connect, uh, collect. And if I now refresh, yes, there we've got it. We see a metric. And actually, this is not the one that I'm emitting. This is the effort server response time. But we should also see a metric with a forecast. Look at that counter, which is right here. And we see that a value of nine is being transmitted, probably because I pressed the five nine times. So this is all the information uh, that we can gather in our application, uh, inspect locally if we want to, and send also into Application Insights to do more interesting stuff um, with the data being generated by our customers from a live application. So I hope uh, this is enough Visual Studio to convince you to stick with me for another half an hour while we take a look at some slides to explore uh, how this works behind the scene and what kind of information you might be interested in gathering. And then later on, we will turn to another demo and uh, where we will see how you can visualize and explore and alert on uh, large amounts of data being collected this way. So how does this kind of thing work? Um, let's start with um, acknowledging that your application code uh, is running on something. And something that can be a virtual machine. Um, it can be in a container. It can be on a serverless uh, function host, but it is running on something. And to start collecting information, um, we can install an SDK in our application code, as we have seen uh, me just do. But that thing will only collect information that we send to it ourselves. There's also a lot of stuff happening on the stack below my application code. Um, how busy is my CPU? Um, how many network traffic is there? How many disk spaces are still free? Um, all that information uh, we can also collect, but often we do it by installing a separate agent on that application host next to the SDK. Now, 
Um, since these containers can come up and go down a few minutes later, VMs come up and they go down and we move them to another region, um, it's not very uh, handy to save all the information we generate on the local system. So instead, we're going to transmit it to another location. And nowadays, we transmit everything using HTTPS, so the same holds for logging information. And from there on, all our uh, traces and logging information are stored in a logging database. Um, it's very comparable. Um, no, it's not comparable to a relational database, but to a tabular database. It's a, it's a table-like uh, struct, table structured database, often optimized for free text search and append-only scenarios. We can query it with a SQL-like language often, um, so there runs a query engine on top of it. All our metrics and all the other things that are more like timeline-based um, are often uh, stored in a optimized time series database. These are databases that are optimized for storing these daytime uh, value tuples. And we can query those databases as well, but often the results are very big tables. Um, and we don't like looking at big tables, especially not if you're wearing a suit for your job. Um, so we're using visualization engines where the query results will be displayed as graphs. And we use them to host our dashboards. Now this is all about storing the data for looking at it later. Um, but the nasty thing of this is um, it, nobody wants to you know, refresh a dashboard to see if something is going wrong. So there is another thing that we can do with the data as well. Instead of just storing it, we can also forward it to a streaming data engine. And where the database is all about storing the data so that we can query it later on, a streaming data engine is about lining up all the queries, getting all the data to flow through, have the queries pick the data out that's interesting for them, and then just discard all the other data. And often the queries also calculate intermediate results and then drop the data that's interesting for them as well. So it's a very different way of working. And whenever a query generates a uh, result, it is automatically propagated up. And you can, for example, get an email out of the query, alert, uh, query result, or you get a text message or something like that. And we can do that for time series uh, data metrics, but also for logging uh, information like traces. This is a very general architecture that, we'll, that you will see in all kinds of products, including the Azure Monitor and Application Insights. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, that's a lot of information. It's all very interesting. But I'm a developer. Why the heck should I care? And that's a point of view that I have to admit I held for a while as well at the start of my career. Um, but I think that we developers should care about this as well. Um, First of all, um, um, because DevOps is really cool, and if you can put DevOps on your CV, um, you might get uh, a higher rate or something. Um, but also because I believe there is uh, true value in DevOps. Um, and going back a little bit, DevOps is about working together as developers and operators with as end goal to quickly and reliable and fast, like a lean, mean value shipping machine, get value to our end users. And to do that, to work together, you have to communicate. You have to communicate well. And I think you can only communicate uh, if you know at least a little bit about what the other party is doing um, to talk about uh, that effectively. And also, as you have seen in Visual Studio, emitting all that information is done from the application code. So if you as a developer do not emit information, uh, your operator cannot tell you what is happening with your application because he or she simply does not have the information. So I think we developers need to care about this subject, at least a little bit as well. So hopefully I have convinced you. No worries, I'm just gonna assume I did. Um, and now you might be wondering, okay, uh, what do I need to monitor about my applications? And as with any question, we can pick it up, flip it around, and start with thinking about what we should not monitor about our applications. And there are two things that I wanna share when it comes to that. The first one is um, maybe don't focus overly on your systems. What I've seen in my career is often when we talk about monitoring of a new application or microservice or whatever, um, somebody comes by and says, well, we've got, we got to get it hooked in the monitoring. And then they yank a big cable in, and that means that we will get the average amount of CPU in use, we will get the memory pressure, we will get the average response time, we get a dashboard, and that's it. 
But circling back to the question that I posed at the start, does this tell me anything about how my users are doing? Does this mean uh, that I can answer the question, are my users happy? Or does PageFile.io uh, really predict conversion? So I think there is very limited value in focusing on your systems. Another, I think, trap is focusing on averages. I think there are a whole bunch of APIs out there in the world that have an average response time of around 100 milliseconds all day long on every dashboard. Um, and there are a lot of outliers and problems hidden in an average of 100 milliseconds. So looking only, out, only at an average um, can be uh, a deception to ourselves, or to say average are lying, cheating bastards. Now that's not to say that there is no value in um, you know, monitoring your system. Because trust me, if your free disk space is 10 gigs yesterday, and this morning it was one gig, it is very likely that there will be no happy user tomorrow. So system metrics can be great leading indicators of what's going to happen to your users. And of course, averages can give you very quickly great insights into how things are going compared to yesterday. But just don't blindly look at those two only, please. To give you a few examples, um, a couple of years ago, I worked at a company where we had a few databases, I think somewhere around 60,000. And all of those databases were always like between five and 25% of capacity, all the time, always, no exceptions. And we didn't even monitor the application, the average usage because there was never, never anything special about it. Until one day an operator found out that we had one database where the load spiked to 100%. It stood there for a couple of minutes and then it went down to the traditional 20% and we didn't know what happened. So the operator said, we have a big problem. We need to put an alert on all the databases at 80% usage. And when it's there for, I don't know, for a minute, we have to scale the database up, pay a little bit more money, but get more performance to the user. And I said, well, I don't think we have a problem at all. We're finally using all the database capacity that we're paying for. Well, I found that very smart of myself. And you can imagine that it didn't really fly with the operator. So we had a little bit of a conversation about this. Um, and in the end, we decided to call the user to find out what was happening. And what we found out was that the user came in to his work, and he sat down at his computer, started a really heavy report, walked over to the coffee machine and had a good chat with a colleague and get a cup of coffee. Um, so I developed this theory that if we made this report render much faster, um, that, you know, the user did not have an excuse to get for coffee at the start of his day. And actually our user might be less happy um, while we were paying more for the database. So the point is, um, think about the user and the impact it has on the user instead of blindly following the system metrics. And I have another few examples, but you know, because of time, uh, let's stick with this one. Um, another point I wanna make is do not look at averages. Um, use things like uh, the maximum response time, maybe the 99 percentile uh, response time. And I'm not gonna be shouting percentiles, 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 um, even though it's a fun animation. Bottom line, measure things that a user cares about. And think it through, because it can be a little bit harder than you might think. And, and to, to show that, I have a very uh, simple example uh, one of the things that I have done for a demo that we'll see later on is I have two functions. One is getting a, a request. It says, this is a final request. It puts it on the queue. And then they have another function that listens to the queue and processes the message. And I want to monitor if this, you know, this cooperation between the two functions is working fine. And if you ask an operator, or somebody, no, not an operator, but some, someone with very limited experience in monitoring, how to monitor that. The answer is almost always, we got to look at the number of messages on the queue. But that's a really bad predictor of how my system is working. Because if there's only one message coming in every minute, and there are 10 messages on the queue, uh, that's not really good. If I process 10,000 messages every second, and there are 25 on the queue, it's like a perfect situation. So just thinking about this scenario and how to properly monitor it, monitor it is not about what we see here on the top left, 
the average number of messages on the queue waiting. One thing that might be more interested, interesting is plotting a graph with the number of messages coming into the queue and the number of messages going out of the queue. So red is incoming, blue is outgoing. Now these two numbers, they should roughly match, so otherwise you've got a big problem. Um, and also these lines, they should overlap uh, pretty closely. And that means uh, that as much as it's going in, it's also going out. But the thing that I settled upon, finally, was that I was going to use another metric. I was going to take every message that I had processed, I was going to look at the time that it was queued, and I'm gonna subtract that from the current day time, then I have to delay in processing. And I think that's a very interesting metric uh, to observe for queue messages, because this really tells me what the queue delay is that the user is experiencing. Now here, the average is around a second and a half, which is a little bit too much for the system, honestly. Um, and I also know why, and that is because this average is uh, hiding a, a few problems. And that's that there are some very weird um, places where it spikes up. And I also know why this is, by the way, because some weird guy, uh, blonde and from the Netherlands, uh, put in an exponential delay at some random intervals. So I hope this illustrates how, how tough it can be to you know, reason about what metrics should I choose, what should I monitor about my application. Um, to give an example of completely the opposite, um, this is a dashboard that I created very recently for a customer of mine. As you can see, I removed all the things that hint at the customer. Um, but this dashboard speaks of two things, operations and actions. And these are actually uh, business objectives, the number of operations that we perform and the number of actions that we perform. So using metrics, we can even report back to our product owner or our manager, or in this case, the chief product owner, about business KPIs, instead of just monitoring how our systems or our users are doing. It's just an example that I created last week. Now, a number of these insights that I personally have come to embrace I've learned over the last couple of years after making some awful mistakes. Uh, but apparently there is a very good book out there by, written by Mike Julian. It's called Practical Monitoring. And it describes a number of the things that I've you know, said before as well. It's a very good book. I can recommend it. If you're not really a reader, um, it's also quite thin. So that's a plus as well. Now circling back from theory to how to do this on Azure, um, you might be wondering, how am I going to do all these things? How am I going to create uh, those dashboards? So to do that in Azure, uh, you would normally choose between uh, these three services, Application Insights, Log Analytics, or the Azure Monitor, kind of depending on what you want to do. But more recently, uh, all of them have been consolidated into the Azure Monitor, even though, for example, Application Insights and Log Analytics still have their own menu items in the Azure portal, you know, part of the Azure monitoring offering. And just see this as these two big databases for metrics and logs, where we can you know, send data and get data out of. Um, what kind of data is then being recorded? Well, first of all, uh, for all the offerings within Azure, SQL databases, Cosmos DB, Service Bus Messaging Systems, Redis DBs, storage accounts, um, there are a number of metrics that are being recorded by the Azure platform automatically. And they are called platform metrics. And which platform metrics exist, exists differs from service to service, but no matter uh, what service they are automatically recorded, they are retained for 90 days, actually I think 93, so that's always more than three months. Um, and it's enabled by default and it's uh, for your use for free. So even if you're not running any code on Azure, you can get metrics out of all the things that you use in Azure. Now on top of that, uh, we can get application metrics. For this, we have to use application insight specific, um, application insights. And we can use this uh, to get uh, all the metrics about our application that are not specific to our application. So things like response times, memory usage, CPU percentages. Um, to use it, we have to install the NuGet package, configure the instrumentation key, and all these things will start getting recorded automatically. And again, on top of that, uh, we have what are called custom metrics. These are metrics that we calculate and decide upon ourselves. 
the metrics that are very specific to our application. The metrics that can maybe be more business oriented instead of just code oriented. Um, and we can calculate and submit them from our own code as you've seen me uh, do before, uh, like 20 minutes ago. And to work with these, we have to install the NuGet package, uh, configure the instrumentation key, and then use the telemetry class again to start emitting the code. Now for logging, um, if we take a look at what's being recorded, um, first of all, we, what I'm focusing on with this logging is only our custom application code. And the things that it records are all the requests. And then within every request, every trace message, every log message, every dependency call, every exception, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And all the things that it collects, they are all being uh, related to the request they belong to, which means that I can, for each request, render a very neat timeline with all the things that have been happening, for example. And uh, what I want to do is I want to take of the 12 minutes remaining, like 10 minutes, to see how this works in practice in Azure. That is, unless there are any questions or anything. Meanwhile, I don't know, can I take a look at something like a chat? Questions? Anyone feel free to unmute. Chat. Okay, nothing, no questions? Cool, okay, moving on. So, um, what are we gonna do? Yeah, let's start with platform metrics. Um, like I said, for any service, so let's pick, no, not that one. Let's pick this one, SQL databases. I am going to open a SQL database. And the first thing you will notice for almost every service that you open up is that you will get a graph. And this is actually coming from the Azure Monitor. Now I can click it, start editing it, editing it. But instead I can go and search for something called metrics which is available for almost every offering. And when I go there, I get into a canvas where I can start graphing graphs out of metrics that are being collected. And to create a line, I have to provide four values, a scope, a metric namespace, a metric, and the type of aggregation that I want to use. Now the resource is pre-selected because I navigated here from my database. The metric namespace is pre-selected as well because there is always just one namespace for a type of service, except for application insights, which we will see later on. And then I can pick the type of uh, metric I want to graph. So let's take, I don't know, the DTU percentage in use. DTU stands for data uh, transaction unit, which is like the XP in Athlon XP. It's a number, if it's higher, it's more, but what the number really means, nobody really knows. So what you can see is that this database for every four hours, um, the load slowly increases from, excuse me, well, that was so not the intention. The load slowly increases, spiky up to, I don't know, seven and a half percent, drops down again. So this is how we can graph any metric that's being recorded. And we can add multiple lines to the same graph. So let's take the DTU percentage again. But instead of drawing the average, let's now draw the minimum. And while we're at it, let's do it again. And say, now it's wanna graph the maximum. Now this graph gives me quite some insight uh, into the load of my database. I can see that the average utilization, so that's light blue in the middle, is fairly low. Um, but that within every minute, there is a little bit of bandwidth uh, in the load on my database. Now let's see that I'm really fascinated, let's say that I'm really fascinated by this graph and I wanna uh, publish it on the dashboard. On the top right, I can go to pin to dashboard and then I can add it to my current dashboard or select any other dashboard I have. Let's just add it to my existing dashboard. It's added there and now I can view my dashboard. And to promise that this really, show that it's really work here at the bottom left, this graph has been added. And this is how easy you can graph your own dashboards out of metrics that are being recorded into the Azure Monitor. Now, if we have these graphs here, uh, like I said, nobody wants to start looking at them all the time to see if something is going south. So just click any graph and say, ooh, if this metrics come, comes above, I don't know, 0 0.2, I wanna get notified. On the top right, I go to new alert rule, 
I will get to an experience where I can start drafting a rule under which I get notified. So the first thing I have to do is select a resource. And that's pre-selected because I come from a graph that's about a certain resource. Then I have to specify a condition, which is always made of, of a threshold and a metric. And the metric is pre-selected because that was graphed in the graph, um, but the threshold I still have to configure. To help me, I can see some most recent data, and I'm going to say that I want to use a static threshold, and I want to get notified when the average is greater than, what did we say, 0.2. I want to evaluate this every five minutes, and I want to evaluate it over the last 15 minutes. Done. My condition is defined. Now, the final thing that I have to do is I have to specify what I want to happen uh, whenever uh, this alert or this threshold is being met. And to do that, I can call into what is called an action group. An action group is nothing but a name and a series of actions to execute. And of course, I can reuse the action group, and that's so that I don't have to you know, put in the phone number of my boss all the time uh, to get called whenever something happens. So I can create a new action group. I give it a name and a short name. And then I can say, I don't know, phone boss. And uh, I say, I want to use a voice message for that. And then I put in his cell phone number. By the way, you might have to pay for that. And then he will get notified roughly within the minute after the alerting condition uh, being met. Now, getting called is not necessarily the most fancy thing. So instead, I can also uh, trigger a logic app. If I know that you know, to restarting a certain service is the remediation for an alert, I can automatically trigger a logic app that does so. I can trigger an automation run book, an Azure function, um, or if you're really enterprisey, you can get a ticket created in an uh, IT service management system, and then hopefully somebody will pick it up. This is how we can create alerts out of metrics. Let's now, um, so we have seen platform metrics, how we can use them to create graphs, dashboards, and alerts. Let's now try to do the same thing for application metrics. So I'm going to go to application insights. I'm not going to go to the, my monitoring thing we've created before, but I'm going to go to a pre-created one uh, for a URL shortener demo. Now that I am in application insights, I can go to metrics again. And I can select which kind of thing I want to graph. So the resource is my application insights workspace. Now the metric namespace, there can be three things. Um, it can be uh, application insights standard metrics. And I'm going to bet that CPU usage is one of them, uh, process CPU. Sure. Um, so this is how I get application metrics. So maybe I want to do CPU usage and uh, response time. Uh, Sarah for response time. And for almost any normal application, these two should correlate with each other. Um, but the blue one is so low uh, that it's very hard to see. But this is how I get application metrics. Once I have application insights configured for my application. So very similar to platform metrics. And the final thing that I want to show is that I can also work uh, with custom metrics. So I can go to log-based metrics. And here I can find all kinds of metrics that I'm calculating in my own application. So since this is a URL shorter, I am gathering uh, some metrics about aliases. And one, for example, is called alias added to Redis cache delay. So this is, again, a queue delay that I'm measuring. And I emit that metric the same way as we have seen in demo at the start. And now it is in application insights, and I can graph it just like any other metric. So this is you know, looking at metrics after the fact. Now, if you're my, like me and you, you, know, you debug in production, uh, one of the things that you might be interested in is seeing what is happening in real time. So I am now switching to another application insights workspace, which is called my monitoring demo. I'm opening it up and I go to a pane called live metrics. Now, remember that this is the Application Insights workspace that is connected to the application that we created uh, before. 
So if I now start this again, and I start hitting F5, and I refresh this page as well, hopefully, there we go, we can see that the metrics recorded uh, from that application come in live. So if I go back here, press F5 a number of times, we can see that the number of requests is coming in here on the top left. And that's the average, uh, that the average request duration is coming here. And we can see that they propagate out of time, out of, um, you can see the time propagate. Now, another thing that you notice is that here, um, all the traces that I emit, they are coming in live as well. And this is really near real time. Um, so if I minimize this and I press F5, bam, there it is. So I can have a near real, uh, a near real time insight into how my application is running. And of course, this also works when your application is running in the cloud instead of on your local computer. Two minutes left. Let's, let's show you something else that's interesting about application insights. Let's say I have a lot of microservices. I have a URL shortener and I have a load generator in front of it and I have some kind of statistics and analyzer. After it, it's like three microservices that are running. Let's see, let's say I wanna get a very quick insight into the health of that application. What I just did, I opened what is called the application map. And what this will do, it will show me the three different services, the amount of calls going through them, the average duration, how they are calling each other. So this is a function that's calling itself. Um, and this is a third function that's being called. But you can also see that it detects that I have a dependency on the database. And you can see the number of calls into the database and the average duration. And I can click that. And then I can see the information that is being collected about the relation between this application and that call into the database. That is, if it hurries up. I can see that there have been a number of failures and I can investigate those. I can investigate the performance and I can jump into what are called uh, logging timelines. And I, I will show logging timelines in just a, another way. I can go to search and here I can see all the things that have been emitted by my application in the last 24 hours in a, in a way that's very similar to the experience that we saw in Visual Studio. I can say in what kind of events I'm interested. So let's say I only want to see uh, requests and dependency calls. And here I get all the things that have been gathered. So let's click one. And now we go to what is called the timeline view. From this one dependency, it looks up the operation that this dependency belongs to. And for that operation, it gathers all the traces, all the dependency calls, um, all the exceptions, and all the things related to that one operation. And it plots them as a, as a calling tree. So I can see that a function at alias to reporting has been called, and that it does two calls into a database. But I can see that it also calls into a dependency. And it's even detecting that that dependency is putting a message on the service bus queue. You can see that it's dependency type service bus queue. And then with that message, it stores the operation ID. And when it picks up that message in that same function a little bit later on, it deserializes that message and that operation ID, and it continues within that operation. So I can see all the different parts uh, relating to each other. So effectively, this is distributed tracing. And I'm running a project right now within a customer of mine where we can open up traces spanning um, up to five different systems with 40,000 entries, and it renders roughly uh, within the second. So this is really powerful. And with that, I have tons of other stuff that I would really like to show you. But unfortunately, I have to start wrapping up. So it's the architecture, but you don't care about it. Um, there is one thing that I want to point out. Remember this picture at the start that we saw about this architecture, um, that we had an application instance with an SDK? Well, for now, I have been hooking up application insights directly to uh, my logger interface. That's not necessarily a thing that you want to do in your applications in production. 
what we often see is that instead of you know connecting your code directly to application insights we're going to connect your code to an intermediate logging framework like nlog or siri log and from that logging framework we're going to reroute all or some of uh, the logging entries to application insights for exfiltration of the system other things might go to sec or datadoc or prometheus or whatever you are using and this is one of the ways that we can make a difference um, between tracing and auditing information. And um, we can even use files on the local file system if we think that's a good idea. Two more things that I wanna say very quickly. First of all, um, the demo that I showed, uh, and that showed all the data from the monitor surrounding metrics, that's available on my GitHub account, uh, github.com slash Henry Bain. It's a fully uh, working URL shortener application. Um, that's of course very, very over-engineered. Um, but it is a continuously running demo, including a load generator, and it resets itself every four, hour, so, uh, four hours. It comes with the ARM templates, it comes with the code, so you can just uh, run it within Azure within a couple of minutes, and then within a few minutes you have uh, data that you can start experimenting with. And the other thing that I want to point out is that uh, these dashboards and these alerts uh, that I've shown um, are also just resources within Azure. And just as any resource, I can get the JSON, the Azure Resource Manager JSON, out of that resource and now define my dashboards and my alerts as code. So I can practice continuous delivery um, on my uh, monitoring infrastructure. With that being said, um, I hope that you do try this at home, because you know, you're there anyways nowadays. Um, and that you have just as much fun as I did uh, learning about these things. And with that being said, thank you for your attention. I'm available for questions. Um, thank you for not running away. And thanks for the invitation, by the way. <laughs>